Hello. So today we'll be talking about CI/CD runners, and as part of this context, we will introduce our open source tool, Apache Tool License Open Source Tool, and we will talk about the challenges that we faced, and also we will mention how we come up with this idea or the root cause of why we are doing this. So to introduce ourselves, I'm Mert. I'm uh, working as a principal product security engineer at Yahoo, securing identity systems. And I'm Cenk. I'm the technical co-founder at Conducto. We are an application security posture management platform. And in this project, we work with Mert together uh, to address a specific problems in the supply chain security world. So <clears throat> as I said, uh, we will have three topics. One, I will introduce the tool. Then I will introduce why we implemented the tool. And the, as the last part of the uh, top, talk, which will have a demo, we will introduce how we implemented it and the challenges that we faced and how we solved them. So our tool is called Control. And it is an eBPF-based runtime agent that can monitor and prevent anomalous behavior that you define. And it is designed to run on ephemeral workloads, although you can still run self-hosted GitHub or GitLab runners. Uh, it is for runners or also, for example, developer workloads, containers that you have, and maybe you want to limit connections. So you can run control as a binary because you can compile as, as a Go binary, or you can run as Docker image if you would like to do so. And as part of the command line, you can provide IPs or domains that you would like to allow only, and the other connections would be dropped as part of this allow listing. Or you can use open policy agent and create your own rigor rules, or maybe you can use your own rigor rules that is existing in your organization or in your day-to-day -day, uh, work. And what control would do is it would compile this into the binary itself, and it would uh, respect the regular rule that you write to allow the connections based on this. And as part of the output, for example, let's say you run this as part of your runner, and in the end, it would give you a basically a sample report of what processes tried to connect to which, which IPs or domains, and if you uh, enabled it, enabled the enforce mode, it would also give you if they are blocked or allowed. So why we implemented this? So if you look at the state of supply chain security, which you might see in every quarter with, from a bunch of vendors published reports, supply chain attacks are getting increasing by the day. And it started to increase a lot in the recent years. And, the, and we have a bunch of uh, hot topic attacks in the recent years. And I think it was last week or last month or so that we had, we had the another one, which you may all aware. Even this week. No, yeah, even this week. <laughs> even yeah. this week. So uh, why, if, why attackers are choosing to attack supply chain now is because there are many ways that they can utilize supply chain to gain wider access. And it is, if you look at the attack vector complexity versus the benefit for them, it is actually quite feasible for them to attack supply chains because like you can repo jack or maybe there might, there might be some uh, misconfigured repositories that allows PRs to run, any commits to run, even though it's not uh, from the main contributor and they can run code in your runner. Or maybe uh, like the recent attack that we observed this week, there might be some domain addresses that is expired and you can just get them to the, as a, and use them as a CDN to distribute your malware. Or maybe you can type of, use type of scratching attack and they some, use some packages, uh, complex names to imitate them so that if developers do a typo, you can, they can just use your uh, library instead of the original one. During and our research, we particularly observed um, attacks in the supply chain and the CI CD part were uh, if you use direct repository access, meaning that in your pipeline, if you 
pulling some artifacts from the GitHub repository or maybe in the Helm repository. Um, this is the, the one of the most common way how um, malicious actors are actually abusing the supply chain portion. And I also would like to mention that our solution is just at the moment currently uh, focuses on the uh, particular use cases. Um, so we know that supply chain is a broader perspective, but we saw that this is one of the weakest link or uh, part in the uh, software development life cycle. Yeah, so as part of our research at the beginning, we realized eventually you need to disclose keys and secrets to exfiltrate, or you need to compromise artifact registries to do some further actions, but eventually it all comes down to the network connections that attacker needs to do, because they need to exfiltrate the data in some way or form, or if you would like to set up a crypto mining rig to some self-hosted runner or some developer machine, for example, eventually you're gonna need a network connection. So that's why we focused on the build step with the tooling. And I would like to give one example before we jump into the implementation details. Uh, this is, for example, a recent example which I find interesting because it highly looks like a red team operation testing, but it may not be. And I couldn't myself uh, I couldn't be able to attribute this to a threat group. So that's why I'm thinking that this is a red team operation testing. So if you look at the package name, it is request requests Darwin Light. Which is a which it seems like a fork of requests, but if you look at the details, there is a setup.py, and within that there is a uh, py install function. So what setup means that when you installing the package, it, this function is going to run, and what this function is doing is, which is why I'm thinking that this could be a, some testing for my, some other attack is. This, for example, looks for a Mac machine with a specific UUID. And once it finds it, oh, it didn't. Ah. Once it finds the specific machine with the specific UUID, it reads this PNG, and within this PNG, it extracts something and executes it. And if you actually look into this in the Aristotle, it is a silver uh, command and control agent. So let's say you downloaded this package to your developer machine and install it. It is gonna install an implant in your machine if it weren't looking for something specific. So why I think is, it, even though it would be a red team exercise or part of testing, it shows that you can easily develop some, some, malicious, uh, some malicious package like this and you can easily upload it into a Python package registry or even for Node.js, NPM also has similar functionality where when you install NPM package, it can run specific functions for as part of installation. So it can be easily weaponized like this. And if you look at the connections it made, it has a bunch of uh, connections back to C2, and that's why we chose to develop control to aim uh, within the build stage because when you provide a lot of this, what you would see in the end in your pipeline would be a bunch of connections are blocked because of the fact that this would be uh, blocked because your allow list wouldn't have these kind of IP addresses. So um, we wanted to have an eBPF based solution in order to address those attacks because First of all, eBPF gives you lots of um, flexibility and power in order to uh, identify or monitor or observe those attacks and as well as the blocking those attacks. And in this, in the second part of our talk, I, I'm going to go how we develop this, what kind of uh, probes or actions or hooks we did, and basically we'll, we'll share some challenges. So, um, since we are in the, the Cloud Native Security Con, I'm not going to explain what is really BPF. Rather, I would like to uh, focus on what kind of um, features or power we have used. So, eBPF 
uh, as I told you, eBPA gives lots of flexibility in the Linux kernel. But one of the main advantages of eBPA is the portability. So uh, since we can create our uh, code in a compiled once and runs everywhere approach, uh, this uh, is very suitable technology for us to create a generic solution which we can use different environments in some cloud runners as well as on-prem runners uh, or maybe the other uh, air gap networks as well. Um, so while developing this sol solution, uh, we obviously did some, some research, look for malware examples, and we wanted to have a roadmap where to start, how to start, it, et cetera. And in almost all of the um, attacks or malware examples that we have seen, there was one common uh, item, which was the outbound network traffic. So that's why, as a first over portion, we wanted to address the egress traffic, and we wanted to use some probes to identify what's literally going on, which processes are reaching to what kind of um, addresses. And in this, our current version currently supports the egress traffic control and DNS queries because we also uh, tested similar solutions and on those similar solutions, we found some ways to um, bypass if you are particularly using Cloudflare like reverse proxies or those kind of solutions. So that's why the DNS queries or parsing DNS responses was pretty important portion of our uh, product or tool, let's say. And the, as, an, as a next step, we also want to focus on the file and the process access. And since this is an open source project, we want to have a built community which, who, who can help us to, to create more controls and more uh, better technology. Um, but eBPF is not super easy to develop, eBPF-based solutions. Um, so this power comes with some, some trade-offs. Um, and here I would like to explain what kind of challenges we have seen while developing those solutions. So if you have ever, if you did, did not work within Linux or low level network or Linux programming, um, this could be new to you. Uh, but uh, as you go down in the driver level in the eBPF, you are losing the context because the driver uh, level controls comes first. So if, to give you a more concrete example, if you would like to block uh, traffic using the um, XP, XP or traffic control syscalls, you may not know or you, you are not going to know which process uh, you are going to block or give the access. So that's why the syscall uh, order or the process order makes uh, a lot of sense in order to understand what's really going on in, in, in the platform. And here, I would like to understand the neural application from the application level controls from the uh, driver level controls, and that's why we want to have the right way and right position to, to find our probes and syscalls. Um, so what we have done is um, we have we want to we start our journey with the K-props. K-props means stands for the kernel props, and um, the eBPF uh, documentation is also uh, once you people to start with the K-props because the K-props are more stable. The API is more stable. You can uh, it, it does not change that often, and it is more or less generic. Even though the using the K-props comes from some, some, some difficulties, but the, one of the main advantages of using K-props are the monitoring or the observability power. So this means that you can attach the K-props or syscalls, you can parse the package and understand what's going on in, the, in, in, in that context, but you're not going to be able to modify the package itself. Uh, this is due to eBPF, uh, brilliant people behind the eBPF, because they don't let you do literally put some uh, needle into this uh, Cisco layer, which, is, which could be quite uh, hard to manage. So uh, what we have done, we used the KPROP TCP V 
4 Connect and the UDP Connect in order to understand which processes are uh, connecting in the which outbound traffic or which IP addresses, whatever. Um, so obviously, in order to parse the DNS addresses, we use the um, um, consume UDP the syscall. So what we have done is that uh, we understand or we capture all the UDP traffic. We identify that this is an, a DNS package. Then we pass the DNS package. We get the A records and we loop through the A records to find the real addresses. And based on the policy that you provide on, conduct, on control uh, in, the, in the regular format or in, in the OPA policy format, we know we can give access or block access um, based on those policies. Um, so as you can see here in the down, we have the uh, C group, uh, uh, C group hook as well. So um, we used different approaches in our, in our processes, meaning that we used the K probes in order to monitor and create a channel or um, a map and we pass those map into the C group or more low level um, syscalls to give or block access. And obviously everything is sent through user space uh, and the user space uses the OPA engine, OPA based engine in order to um, decide what's really going on. So how it works. Um, so in the, by the way, this is one of the examples that we have seen. So uh, in the CI/CD uh, supply chain security attack vector, one of the most common approach was um, leak, uh, secret leak attacks. So we have seen a couple of examples that the environment variables are getting um, sent to an unknown address. And this is how the runners, um, GitHub, or um, environment variables are getting leaked. So um, since we can identify all the network traffic is going on, we know which process is going where, and by parsing the DNS package uh, using the following the map, we literally know which uh, IP, which process is going to which IP address and the DNS at domain address, and um, giving the user space OPA policies, we can uh, identify uh, if this is a malicious activity or not. And yeah, we will have a, a live demo uh, and let's see how it will go. So yeah, in the meantime, I would like to emphasize the C group. Uh, importance of C group, I would say, it was a lesson learned for us. So why, because eBPF provides you with a, let's say we have a kernel pro for TCP, it gives you copy of that socket uh, data. So you cannot take action on that socket uh, by just uh, doing some tampering on that. So that's why you need to have some other means of, for example, disallowing connections. So that's why we have C group along the chain. Yeah. Um, so actually developing eBPF based solutions are um, similar to juggling or wrestling. So when you poke one part, the other part is kind of uh, may not work and uh, it is not super detailed uh, document if there is a documentation in the Linux kernel, but not all the Linux um, um, capabilities is not working. And the, obviously the most uh, challenging part developing eBPF technology is the, to, to having the limited C. So you have less stack space. And uh, we also observed a couple of issues that the compiler was giving uh, it's a weird error, which was the um, um, too complicated loops or something like that. So you should able to create uh, specific, rather simple uh, solutions uh, or approaches. So let me, okay, I think you can see. So this is the dry run version. So let me start again. Um, and let's see. So we, let me explain what we are going to do. So I'm just going to give the access to one allowed host only. So the 
the control works reject by default approach and with the given policies or the given parameters arguments it is working as expected so let me oops so it is not given access in the google again the amazon is not working but since we have an artifact in the allowed host the allowed activity is, is and the allowed action is getting a, Run. And we will have a, so let me close those. We will have a pass and block action. Uh, and this is basically how it works. And right now I'm going to show this the same example in an, um, in an GitHub action. And it, that version will make more sense, obviously. So. I think you can see that. Okay, so we have an um, we, we have a GitHub action here, and I'm going to commit the changes, and we will see what's going on in the. Is this the action part? So let me check this and let's see. Okay, so we have an action going on here. So how, um, so what this action does is that we are downloading our binary here, running binary there, uh, and after running the, our binary, which is a single binary, uh, the binary injects itself into the runner kernel and uh, follows all the actions uh, based on the based on the policies that we provided. And uh, once it's finished, uh, it finishes. We will see all the log, which process reached where. Um, and we will understand if there is any malicious activity or not. Um, so this approach actually works very well and we re recently uh, agreed with and one of the major banks in Europe um, and they are, they are going to be one of the first adopter in this open source technology. Uh, right now we are going to give a couple more updates and since this is an open source technology, you also would like to ask your, your support, um, if you'd like to have your, your, your PR or your uh, com commitment as well. So let's wait a couple more minutes. Uh, since it's a live demo, uh, we should see. So what this uh, GitHub Actions does that we have an, a malicious uh, event, which I'm going to show in a bit. And this event actually replicates the secret leak option. Um, so let's wait a few more minutes and let's see if it's, it will go or not. So since I gave pretty strict rules, uh, the live logs in the GitHub Actions may not work, but yeah, let's see. So meanwhile, while waiting for this one, if you have any questions, uh, we can we can answer actually. So let me see. So uh, one of the tricks that they noticed uh, was the command that we ran was sudo. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Um, yeah. Yeah. So. Um, since the BPF requires super user access, there are different ways to do that. So obviously, one of the most common, uh, the, the, uh, the preferred approach is to create then runner itself, uh, or we can wrap this up using the, the uh, other Docker, Docker uh, command. But obviously, in order to use the BPF technology, we will need the super user command and the similar approaches in the market, uh, they're using the same. Uh, technology because otherwise uh, it's not going to be possible for such a solution to 
identify or understand what's going on in the in the in the market. Yeah. In the Docker example, for example, in the Docker as well, you need to give privilege access. Yeah. Otherwise, it won't be able to trace the kernel events. Yeah. Uh, but for the first adopter, uh, Bank, uh, we are trying to add this technology into their existing runners. So the, the technology will be embedded in their runners. Um, by the way, let me check this for, okay, sorry. Ah, okay, it's already finished, yeah. And one of the weird behavior when we were testing this was when you run the tool and allow certain connections, it wasn't in the initial uh, run that we did it wasn't respecting the already established connections, for example, yeah. which was understandable. But since you need to define what you need to do, we took some hopes to get it working for GitHub only so that it wouldn't be easily bypassable. For example, let's say you have already an established malicious connection with the self-hosted GitHub runner scenario. We would obviously like to block that as well. So. That was also one of the challenges that we faced and couldn't figure out with the Google searches or the sources that we have available on the internet. Yeah, so by the way, the, you may not, I mean, you can use the same tool for monitoring purposes only. Meaning that instead of having the preventive action, it can just give you the full list of processes and the addresses. And as you can see um, in the GitHub runners, uh, we have a couple of IP addresses and processes that we are not aware of, obviously, and this is how the uh, GitHub runners itself are, are working. But yes, uh, in order to use this technology, the high privilege access is required. So that's why we wanted to use this as a fully open source project. Uh, and um, if companies wants to use change or update accordingly, um, this is totally acceptable. Uh, by the way, this is still an early project, and uh, we are always looking for new um, feedback. And obviously, if you have any any, any questions or uh, feedback, we will definitely uh, consider and update it. Um, so, oops, not this one. Yeah, so the roadmap, uh, we are right now developing some um, apps in order to make it more easy or accessible in the, in the cloud uh, pipelines. Uh, and we also want to increase the Rego support or the OPA policy support. Right now, uh, you should be um, compiling or adding the, um, the Rego rules inside the binary, because since it's a binary, but our motivation is able to use this technology uh, in an everything as code approach, meaning that the regular rules will be inside, the, for example, in the repository itself, and when the pipeline runs, uh, the, uh, the controls or the policies will getting updated or changed over there. And, all, and right now, we are also working the file sensor and process uh, capabilities. Um, we have created a POC, and this is particularly useful in order to identify the staged loaders or malwares, uh, because if you know that in the NPM uh, process, uh, there is a sub-process called, batch sub-process called, we may understand that this could be some, some fishy thing. And uh, by the way, we can use the CBPF technology to create S-bombs on the fly. Um, so this is also um, will be on the roadmap after finishing the file, file sensor, and file processes. And this is also a call to action if you would like to learn eBPF or would like to contribute a early, uh, early stage project. It would be nice uh, if you support yeah. this. And we have also some other ideas that we would like to see if we can implement. Like for example, we are exploring if we can mask some of the environment variables if you're trying to get them or read them from memory and if you're not the process that Rego would allow you, for example. Yeah, yeah. So That's pretty hard. This is a pretty challenging yeah. uh, task, 
but uh, the idea is to give uh, transparent visibility in the processes. Um, and this is a, actually a gateway uh, for us to learn more about the EPPF and the other technologies. But um, yeah, that's all for us. Yep. You can use QR to directly uh, open the GitHub link. And if you have any questions, any more questions, we would like to get them.